kinds of poems to write is, any guesses? What, what do you think is my favorite kind of poem to write?
So I could turn a small mishap in the kitchen, like a mistake someone made, into a dramatic electrifying poem. How would I do that? Well, let's see. Um, let's say that my sister was flipping pancakes. So my sister likes to cook. She makes pancakes sometimes. And she uh, makes a little mistake. She, she um, kind of, the pancake slides out a little bit and it gets batter on her uh, shirt or something. So I look at that and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could exaggerate this into an interesting poem. So I think, well, instead of just slipping out, maybe my sister takes the pan and she throws it into the air. And the pancake leaps out and it does a little twirl in the air. And my sister looks up at it with a moment of dread and it seems like time freezes. And then the pancake comes roaring down and lands with a giant splat on top of her head and it comes streaming down all over her clothes, which were really expensive and she just bought. So that would be a little more dramatic and it would be way exaggerated. Maybe the clothes she didn't really just buy, she'd had them for a little while, and maybe she didn't really throw the pan off in there. But that's where exaggeration comes in. So if something happens, you think, hmm, this might be kind of funny, let me make it bigger, then you can uh, turn that into a really big event. Achoo! All of you have sneezed before, right? Yes. Yes? yes. I think we've all sneezed before, whether it's because we're sick or we have allergies or it's just cold out. Yeah, we've all sneezed. So I'm not sure all of you have sneezed so hard that you could soak the cheese in a sandwich, though. So I wrote a poem about a very improbable or not very possible sneeze. Here it is, the sneeze. I must hold in a dreadful sneeze. I beg you to excuse me, please. I know my trumpet is a great disgrace. I'm willing to accept my loss of face. I sneeze much to the public's dismay. I humbly beg you for me to pray. For I have a feeling that my soul is torn. It's not only my throat that's too well worn. I know that Lady Cunningham was disgusted. I know that I'm a scoundrel not to be trusted. I know that I shouldn't have come at all when I knew I might ruin the Countess's shawl. My grandmother had to sell a brass samovar. My sneeze and the storm were quite on par. The lessons at school could barely be heard, because I always sneezed through every word. Now half the household sick, the others died. My grandma spanked and my grandma cried. I swear now that I'm sneezing with fear, but I can't squeeze out a morning tear. I'm being shut up like a rabid dog. My windows are blocked with extra thick logs, and I can tell you it's no use to fight. There's a guard outside my door every night. I only got hankies for my present this year, that and a book of small font Shakespeare. I wish that my sneezes went to outer space, that way they wouldn't be such a waste. Maybe an alien would hear the noise, and know of other living boys. Send an expedition to planet Earth, then my sneezes would have some worth. But now from dreams I must retreat, and try not to sneeze, I have to look neat, to attend a party of great renown, the most important party in our town. All I can hope is that I don't have to talk, because the sneeze will creep out like a slug from a rock, and earn me another approving stare. Oh no, here's a sneeze, I tell you, beware! I sneezed on the sandwiches, soaking the cheese. I sneezed on the silver for catering fees. I beg you to excuse me, please, oh please forgive me for my deplorable sneeze. So, this is um, a poem, The Sneeze, and now it's, it's pretty long, and I wanted to go through and explain some of the words that might be a, a little hard to understand. So, I must hold in a dreadful sneeze, I beg you to excuse me, please. So, this person sneezes a lot, and he's saying, please forgive me, I, I know I sneeze a lot, I'm willing to accept my loss of face, or great disgrace. So, if it's a d disgrace to you, it's something that embarrasses you, that's kind of, um, uh, it, it humiliates you. I sneeze much to the public's dismay, so everyone gets all uh, kind of sad and then um, disapproving when he does that. And so, let's go on to the other Oh, yes. Um, so then here, he sneezes so hard that it ruins someone's shawl. And then my uh, grandma had to sell a brass samovar. A samovar um, looks like this. That's, uh, it's kind of a Russian teapot thing. Um, my sneeze and the storm were quite on par, so there was a big storm made coming up some sneeze. The lessons at school could barely be heard because I always sneeze through every word. So he sneezes so loud, it's not only a really wet sneeze, it's a really loud sneeze. It is a really contagious sneeze. And then um, because he's this, you know, public health danger, he's being shut up. 
uh, like a rabid dog in his room, so he's kind of grounded because of all the sneezing. There's a guard outside his door, and because of his sneezing, he only gets handkerchiefs for Christmas, and also some, uh, or for my friend this year, that number of small font Shakespeare. So nobody really likes him anymore. They just give him these kind of not, not that great presents. And he's saying he wished his sneezes would go to outer space, but then he says, now I have to um, go back in my dreams, and I have to look neat to attend this really big, important party. And then, of course, he sneezes and ruins everything. So, do you think you would you would like to be that person? No. No. No, I don't think anyone would want to be that person. Um, now, raise your hand if you've ever sneezed like that before. I see some raised hands. Oh, really? Have, have you ever sneezed a sneeze so wet that it would project and, and ruin someone's sweater? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I see some yups. Oh, well, in that case, I have one more or a few words of advice for you. Cover your sneeze. That is very helpful. <laughs> yes, and in fact, I ought to put down here, cover your sneeze, person. about like cover your cough and sneeze because anytime anybody coughs I'll run over to them like cover your cough and sneeze but um yeah so I'm a little obsessed about that all right now that example obviously no one's ever sneezed like that or I hope you have never sneezed like that so if I had just written a poem about a sneeze without exaggerating it might have gone something like this I walked down to um, the library I sneezed my sister said bless you that was it and I forgot about it the next day that's not a very fun poem so I exaggerated you say that I shouldn't exaggerate so much? Achoo! You insult me. Exaggerating can make something as mundane as a sneeze into a terrifying, life-threatening situation and kind of funny. So we can use our imaginations to exaggerate real-life events and turn them into exciting, interesting poems. So now um, I'm going to see what I have in the kitchen to eat. Um, I'm actually in the basement, so there's a refrigerator. Oh, 
oyster. So I pop an oyster in my mouth and ugh. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm in the same boat with you there. Um, so yeah, oysters, what are some other gross meals? Uh, Ashland, dirt. Done! <laughs> Taking out the garbage. 
what what don't you like about it? Why don't you like it? It smells bad and takes up time. I could be uh, spending doing something, but write down some details. Like it smells gross. It sometimes leaks. It's really heavy. Exaggerate those details. Okay. So let's start with step number one, and then head to two. Here. So you can, um, and, and we'll share what we have for every step. Let's start with choose an activity or event that you dread. So write down an activity or event that you dread. And after you finish writing that down, raise your hand and share it. Write down an activity, guys. One activity that you were at. Write it down on your paper right now. One, only one. One. One activity. Akia, what's yours? Really dirty. What have you said? 
said something about you had to sleep for days after you cleaned your room. Something about getting really sleepy? Yeah, if you're really tired, you could say, I was so sleepy that I could sleep for days, as your teacher said. Or you might um, think about another way to say, are you tired? And, and maybe um, say, I'm so tired I could sleep for days. I'm so tired I could, uh, that if I, like, passed out right now, I, I might... I would probably uh, not wake up for a couple of months if you want to really set Yeah, so it's out in details. You can go pretty far uh, with with what you have. Definitely getting sleepy as well. Who would like to share some of their exaggerated details? Another exaggerated oh. detail. Say, um, Alexia? Um, my room in my exaggeration. When you come in my room, it's like you see um, a mountain of dirty clothes. A mountain of dirty clothes. You could say, maybe, yeah, a mountain of dirty clothes, having a mountain of dirty clothes. You could say, uh, you could exaggerate that even more. You could um, maybe put something like, I had a mountain of dirty clothes in my room. It reached so high that it was in the competition for highest mountain with Mount Everest or something like that because it was so big. Um, who else would like to share uh, an exaggerated detail? Studying poems. Studying poems. 
right? Yeah. Um, and here's a tip. Studying the subject in school provides you with new words and ideas that you can use in your poems. So for instance, if I was learning about reptiles, here are some cool reptile words. Black mamba or mamba, vertebrate, striated, tetrapod, cold-blooded, scales, crocodilia, stenodontia, squamata. Uh, and so we just have a giant list here of great reptile words, most of which I cannot pronounce. I love the last one, desert death adder. I mean, you can just imagine a poem about the desert death adder. So learning about um, things like reptiles, for instance, you could come with lots of cool reptile words. So think of the things that you study in school, come with uh, funny poems about that. De uh, I, I'm still just loving desert death adder. I mean, doesn't that sound like a nice pet? Or you could exaggerate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, we need to get some desert death adders in our house. We'll be like, Mom, here, look at, look at my new pet. Um, here's Rover the desert death adder. <laughs> That might be a little funny. Yeah. So you can write poems about all kinds of things that you learn in school. But now, we are going to turn one of the ideas that you guys suggested uh, in exaggerating an event, a real life event, we are going to turn one of those things into an actual poem. So I heard a lot of things about uh, dogs. So how about we write a poem about cleaning up after a dog? How does that sound? Yeah. Chickens water, cleaning their coop. So I was saying cleaning their coop 
or feeding fodder. Um, I, uh, let's see, what, um, their water bowl, let's describe their water bowl, so let's exaggerate, let's make the mold really big. Their water, water, ah, I'm getting tongue twisted. their water bowl is covered in spores of mold, um,
drink, drink, think. They're saying think, okay, run, drink, or stink. You could run to drink. I do not like giving the chickens a drink. From the sink. You know what we could do? If we want to get really fancy, um, we could rhyme drink, sing, think, and stink. Um, having to fill up the bowl at the sink. Um, why, um, why do, why do I hate this? What do you think? Very simply, it's just, it's just the stick. Okay, here we go. Here's the poem. I do not like giving chickens water, cleaning their coop, or feeding fodder. Their water bowl is covered in spores of mold. I think it's getting a little too old. The filled up bowl is full of slime. It's very heavy. It takes too much time. I do not like giving the chickens a drink, having to fill up the bowl at the sink. Why do I hate this? What do you think? Very simply, it's just the stink. Okay, there we go. Thank you so much for contributing to this poem. Yay! Yay! So, this is an excellent poem. Good job, everybody. So, you can write a funny poem exaggerating a real life event like feeding the chickens and make it an interesting, funny poem. So, who would like to tell me one thing you've learned today? One thing you've learned. What's something that you've learned? Somebody that has an answer. Let's say Nakia. What the word exaggerated means. Great. And let's go one more thing. Um, Haley. How to write a funny poem. How to write a funny poem. Great. I'm so glad to hear that you guys have learned from the session, and I hope that you all enjoyed writing our poem very much. Now, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Uh, Tori, before we have questions, we, did you write the poem down? Yes. I did not write it on Will time. you email it to me? Yes, so I will. In it. fact, I am planning, um, I'm, I'm putting, I'm going to put this on my blog. It'll be at adorasvtalk.com. I can write that down. And so, uh, and I will also make sure to email it to, uh, I think we have an email on the program request that says contact, send materials to, and so I can send that over to you. Okay, because we want to publish it. Oh, great. Our, that's, that's <laughs> the link. Yeah, I mean, in I, our school newsletter. Yes, that would be lovely, and I really appreciate that because the students contributed to this, and you guys did a great job. And um, one thing I just hope is that, is that the parents of whoever has to feed the chickens water is not going to see this. But um, even if they do, maybe, maybe you can show this to them and be like, Dad and Mom, here's why I don't want to feed the chickens water. Um, maybe it'll convince them, I hope. <laughs> so, uh, any questions? Alan? Oh. Did you write it on I'm sorry? Can you? Can you write a poem on anything? Can I write a poem? Can you write a poem on anything? Yes, pretty much. You could write a poem on a remote control. You could write a poem on tofu. You could write a poem, yeah, about anything. Alicia? Um, if um, when you were saying a poem the other time, could you use some of the words you put in the other poem into um, the poem that we just did? Um, so you're saying... If you write a poem and you like some of the words you use in that poem, can you put those words in another poem? Yes. You know, you could, definitely. And and people can, you can write the same, but you can write a poem about the same topic, too. Let's say that you really like writing about um, bugs. Then you could write one poem about bugs, and maybe you like one line, it's like, bugs do not look like rugs or something. And you could, yeah, you could probably do that. Just, um, yeah, you can use some of the same words. Just make sure that it's not, it doesn't end up being, like, too close to your other poem. Um, because then it would be just kind of like that poem. But, yeah, you can, you can use some of the same words. Now, uh, I'm thinking in the newsletter. Now, I have her question. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. In the newsletter, you think you can, like, um, print out a copy of the, is there a poem that we made? We're gonna we're gonna get a copy of the poem. I'll give all of you a copy of the poem, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Donna? Yes. Why do you write books about yourself? Why do I write books about myself? Well, really, they're not about myself, actually. My book, Flying Fingers, this is the first book I wrote. Uh, this is not really about myself. It's actually nine of my short stories, nine of the short <laughs> stories that I wrote, as well as some tips on writing. And so it's not so much about myself, it's just the stories that I wrote. And then my second book, Dancing Fingers, it's even less about myself because I wrote poems and my sister was involved. So she wrote some poems in there as well. So they're not really about myself, they're just stories and poems. But you can definitely write about yourself. Like you can write stories about yourself and what happens to you. That can be really fun. It's called a personal narrative, actually. And so, yeah, that's that's a whole other area of writing that's really fun to do. And a lot of poems, a lot of funny poems are so funny because they're things that happen to you. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Uh, um, any other questions? Car?
and have a wonderful day. Oh, I'm sorry.